This episode is brought to you by freedadcourse.com. You are always one conversation away from changing your life. And the power of hello is something that I subscribe to every single day. And I'm always saying hello to new people everywhere I go. Increasing your opportunity, increasing your connection, and getting access to the solutions to the problems that you are facing, whether you're on active duty or just beginning your veteran transition, or you've been transitioning out for 20 years. On the other side of hello are the solutions that you're looking for. Again, head on over to freedadcourse.com. Get your five-episode audio course to create more connection, create more friendships, and get back to living the life that you're trying to design. Dory 1, this is Fire Team Delta. Dad's coming home. Welcome to the Military Veteran Dad Podcast, where it is our mission to bring every dad home. I am your host, Ben Colloy. I'm a United States Marine veteran, husband, and a father. We will bring authentic conversations to inspire action in your life so we can close the gap between the dad you are today and the dad you want to be tomorrow. This is the Military Veteran Dad Podcast. Welcome back to Military Veteran Dad, episode 79. This week's episode with Kimber Hill is going to be a different one that we've never done before. Kimber Hill is the co-founder of VertForce.us, which is a remote work talent agency that specializes in helping military spouses and veterans find opportunities within the remote world. And being a fellow job seeker, I can say the remote work is one that is often talked about, especially in Corona. These things about working from home, it's more companies are doing it, but trying to find the right job or even trying to find a position that doesn't have 2 million people applying to it can be extremely difficult. So what I like about VertForce is it's kind of the back door into the system of remote work because she already has the relationship with companies that value hiring veterans, value hiring military spouses. They understand what that family is going through. They understand what that family has gone through, and they want to make sure that they have an opportunity to serve and find a purpose in life, just like everybody else. And so her agency helps veterans and military spouses, like I said, find that path to remote work in a sustainable, that's flexible, that as you you PCS from one duty station to the next, you're not always having to find a new job, that these jobs go with you because they are founded on remote work. We talk about the idea that men transitioning out of the military don't just have to get caught up on the idea that they need to get a job and sit in an office, that there are many jobs out there that they specialize in that can help them transition into a world where they actually get to spend time with their family instead of transitioning into a world where they're actually losing more time maybe than they did when they were serving. They help create environments where dads can really be present. They can be within the family all day long. And guys, that's what our families need. They need our presence. They need us to be there. And so much of our soul, especially on the other side of transition, other side of transition is where we just spend so much time in the military and we just want to focus on being dad. These opportunities are perfectly played to that. So without further ado, let's get started with Kimber Hill, because this episode is completely different than we've talked about, but it is absolutely awesome because it goes into a whole new world that most people probably have never thought of. And I will see you on the other side. Welcome to the show, Kimber. Hey, Ben. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm excited because we have never really dived into any angle on what you are talking about today. And so So for the listeners, go ahead and unpack a little bit about what you do and what your business does and how that can really open up a whole new world that people haven't been open to before. Absolutely. So VertForce stands for the Virtual Workforce, and that's the name of my business. We, I'm a military spouse, active duty military spouse, which means I'm, you know, trailing my husband all over the world uh, for his career, which I fully support. And to be completely transparent with you, I think I would be totally bored with a regular suburban lifestyle. So this is a fun adventure for both of us. But one of the big challenges that military spouses face are is career continuity. And in turn, it really impacts your identity. If you have to reinvent yourself every two to four years, depending on how often you're PCSing. So we started VertForce in 2018 to help connect military spouses to virtual and remote careers that they can do from home, first of all, and that will transport with them to any upcoming duty stations, which kind of comes full circle. And one of the reasons I wanted to speak to your audience is 
a big component of that is being able to balance your work from home remote career with being a stay at home parent. And I also think a lot of people may have the pre preconception that all military spouses are female because they're not. We, we serve mm. a lot of male military spouses. And in approaching this community, we've recently started serving a lot of veterans too, because we find that when veterans are transitioning out of the service, they've spent so much time away from their family that they prefer a work from home career um, or side gig or gig based opportunity or project based role so they can be with their family more. From my perspective, working from home is just a great mix of being able to provide income for your family and also be a part of the family, be closer to home. And what you're speaking to there is on the military spouse side, often the worst problem that we have or that that word has or any of the words like stay at home dad, stay at home mom is their labels and labels have stereotypes and labels have definitions that people just assimilate and assume to be true. And I think stay at home mom is a very good example because it's rooted in history. Like for it's decades, centuries that the stay at home mom was one that took care of the house and there wasn't really anything extra she did. There wasn't any mentioning. It was the leave it to beaver type template. Yeah. And when we, as we go into the next decade, like it's all about trying to like redefine those labels and help shatter them. Cause once you dive into them, you realize the labels are completely wrong. Like, even just learning like there's an entire community of stay at home dads that support their wife in their career and their wife gets to have the career. I actually have a shirt that says stay at home dad family over career. And yeah. that's, it's, you don't, I didn't get open to that world until a few months ago and it does, wasn't even in my radar. And I think that's something else that transitioning members get confused on when you get out because the military gives you that pre-programming. They give you the TAPS course. They give you this instruction manual but that's the civilian instruction manual. That doesn't really help you close the gaps inside yourself. It doesn't really tap into your desires for what you want or even help figure out what it is that you maybe want. Like a lot of times people just transition out and have no idea what they truly want to do. And maybe they don't realize that family is something they've been missing or they have a deficit of time that we talk about a lot in the podcast. And all of those things are things that are it gets you confused. And so what I like about your resource is it helps unconfuse that, open up doors. And I often say that like a veteran, like a lot of times the best way to serve a veteran is to create opportunity. Like opportunity is how you help change a veteran's life. Is one of the reasons why I love everything about Bunker Labs because Bunker Labs helps veterans create their own opportunity. And it's almost like the modern day American Legion. Instead of like creating a network of people that are transitioning out like the American Legion did back in the day, veterans need opportunity. Like that's how you can empower a veteran to step into their life. And mm -hmm. that's a lot of what you're helping veterans in a very unique way, create opportunities that aren't Googleable unless you start knowing what to Google. Like that's a, it's a limit of Google. Like Google is only as good as the words you put into it and the words you put into it but only as good as the, the words that you have inside yourself. And so I love everything that is about your mission and what you're able to, to do. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I think you hit the nail on a head on the head there, getting plugged into the right communities who can help you is much more of a networking, making friends, creating connections. And it's not necessarily something you can just go Google. When you reflect backwards, because you weren't always this enlightened with all these amazing opportunities and resources, if you were to time travel back to the moment where you were kind of right, maybe a, a week before you started Vert Force or you had this idea hit you, what was something that you would have wished someone would have told you in that moment that you wish you could have used now and maybe would have shortcut that process? Like if you could go back and give yourself a sticky note of advice, what would that look like? That is such an interesting question. And now that we're almost two years old and we've seen over 500 military spouses and in many cases veterans achieve work from home positions, I'm astounded at the kind of progress that we've made. But looking back at the weeks leading up to launching VertForce, I had this whisper in my heart 
in the back of my head to do something like this. And it was actually inspired by a Bible study group that I was going to with a lot of other military spouses. We were meeting on Wednesday nights at a coffee shop and I was just hearing all of these spouses complaining about giving up their careers to follow their spouse across across the world, really. And it wasn't so much of a complaint, like I'm so, er, I'm so bummed out that I'm having to give this up as it was. I just feel like I've lost my identity and I feel like I don't have a purpose anymore. I'm trying to figure out what that is, but right now it feels like my purpose is just um, being my spouse's support and I need something else for me. And I was really afraid to approach this because I had only been a military spouse and been affiliated with the military spouse community and the military community in general for a year, if that. Uh, So I was very intimidated about embarking on this conversation because I thought that I would be looked at by the community. I think, I guess the, the imposter syndrome was sitting in, you know, who are you to talk about this? Who are you to bring this up? Uh, what qualifies you to to try to solve this problem? So that really overwhelmed me for a bit, and I was terrified to do this. So my sticky note that I would give myself is, hey, remember that imposter syndrome is just in your head, and if you have a solution, you need, you owe it to your community to bring it forward. That reminds me of a story from PodFest where we also met again, And there was, we were at the networking round tables and there was a, I don't think she wasn't military related, but she helped edit podcasts for other people, but she had a podcast on her heart to help mothers through postpartum depression. And she was kind of listening to that probably imposter syndrome. And I remember at the table because her mission, like my mission, like when you bring your voice into the world and help be that friend that someone needs through darkness, you can help save a dad and give a dad back to their family in her case a mom back to her husband and to her kids. Like I had four women at that table crying when they kind of all realized what she was holding in and not getting out and stepping into. And that's so powerful because that I had it myself. And one thing I liked about podcasting was I could kind of hack away at the imposter syndrome week by week. And as the stats and climbed up, it would almost internally crush the, the person that said you're not a podcaster because then when you see the downloads, you're like, well, that's not what my voice in my head is saying. Like that says the exact opposite. And it was a nice safe place podcasting. Like you're not going to explode your voice going into the internet. Is not going to reflect back? And it's going to be like kryptonite. And so that little space for me was a great place for me to start. And I think if you feel an over suffering imposter syndrome, a podcast is a great thing because it's a nice safe space. You're having a conversation with another person and that can help you go forward. I want to maybe look forward towards the dad for a second. So if there's a dad listening to this and their military spouse and their wife has said, I suffer from an identity crisis of moving from base to base. As a woman, what are those things that you liked about that maybe your husband did or that you wish your husband would did? Like what advice would you give for husbands to, to be the person they need to be for their spouse during this time? or during that feeling is a better way to say it probably. I have loved every time my husband has created space for me to pursue vert force and pursue something that really lights me up. Prior to vert force, I wanted to launch an Amazon store and I did that. And my husband in every situation where I've had an idea for how I can fulfill that component of who I am He's just been so incredibly supportive and his exact words every time are, you know, you can do anything that you set your mind to. And I know that sounds kind of cliche, but I promise you, he really means it. I know when he's talking to me, I 100% believe him. And he says, I I believe that you are going to be successful at anything you do pick what you want to do the most, pick what you really love, because whatever you do, you're going to be good at it. So I think really laying down that foundation of encouragement and success, giving me time uh, to get that done. So occasionally what that looks like is he's making dinner while I'm in another room working on the business, 
or he volunteers to do the laundry. So I can come in here into my office, which is where I'm sitting right now and do a podcast interview with you, Ben. So it's, it's kind of shaking up the general routine so that I have the creative freedom to pursue what I love. And if I were to bring like a masculine and feminine in, as he steps into his masculine to create a kind of a calm space where you feel safe to, to let yourself grow and be more you, then allows your feminine to come out, but then also you allow it and figure out who you are as a, as a strength and as a beauty. And oftentimes I think that's where most marriages kind of get that equation wrong. And your, your husband's doing it in a way that creates and lets your feminine come out and grow. And oftentimes it, we have it backwards. We either don't have the fe- men and don't have the feminine or the masculine on, or we don't understand it, or we have not done the work to create that safe space where like that you can trust your husband, that he's got it. That's something that I've been working on through coronavirus is having the word trust be at the cornerstone, like, because something that you, you probably have experienced that if you don't trust your husband with the small things, you can't bring him the big things. Like I want to start an Amazon store. Or I would say it's a big thing, but it's the trust in the little things that like, I feel confident that if I bring him this, even though I'm uncertain about it, he's going to help reflect back that certainty that I need. And I trust him and love him enough that he's going to support that decision. Yep. You're right. And one of the other things that we see in our marriage is I feel confident in emotionally conveying to him when I'm overwhelmed when I have anxiety, which these are things that I struggle with as a human being. And as a woman, I think a lot of women in general struggle with anxiety and depression. And it's because, you know, society puts so many expectations on a woman, you know, you've got to earn a salary, you've got to be a mother, you've got to be, um, you know, the perfect housewife, all of these things all at one time. So I'm really comfortable just telling my spouse, hey, I don't know why, but right now I'm completely over." Whelmed and have this really nauseating, anxious feeling. And he's very receptive to that and talks me through it. And that, that allows me, it gives me the creative space to kind of see it, to see life from his perspective. And a lot of times his answer is, okay, you are trying to do too much. You do need to back up. And just having that openness in the conversation having that conversation always on the table and not letting it be something that we keep hidden or we keep under wraps or I try to mask is really nice just to have it, you know, flat out there. And as we look at starting a family this year and we look at me working from home and continuing to maintain a career and become a a work from home parent while he is a serving um, naval aviator, then we're just continually talk, putting things like that on the table. And probably the other part that you've identified within this is, and your business helps reinforce it, you've created your own community of people that have similar goals and ambitions. And that in itself probably breathes life back into you because having every day reminded that you're not the only one that wants a bigger and, and better life for yourself and your family. And that the same person that's going through the same feeling And then when you help other people through that darkness into light, that this isn't the only way I can imagine that's even just been something you probably didn't expect by starting vert force, but that's something that's been almost like an energy boost to the whole momentum of what you've been able to do. Absolutely. And we, we created vert force to teach the military community veterans and military spouses that working from home is possible. And then we created the community to help connect them to virtual, vetted, military-friendly opportunities. So we have all of these employment partners that we're building relationships with. And whenever they want to hire, we say, okay, hey, we're flagging you from, you know, 100 miles away, but I'm going to, you know, stay in your inbox and I'm going to stay on your radar until you look at the Vertforce community and try to pick your talent from here. We want you to hire these people because these are the people who, who really need to work from home. They need it. It's a part of solving the unemployment epidemic in this demographic. So when we created it, I didn't expect to make friends. I, I didn't create it just because I wanted to 
meet people. I was just wanting to deliver a solution. I didn't know that I was going to be building friendships. But since we've built it, we we realized we needed help sustaining it. So we created a remote work training program, which brings in veterans and military spouses to train them in how to work remotely. But as they're training, they're actually supporting our community. They're supporting the operations of our organization. And I talk to these people every day. We've had over 75 people go through the program. They're some of my closest friends. Now that we're stationed in Jacksonville, Florida, four of them are here. Uh, I moved to Jacksonville in October of 2019. I went to a Hire Heroes uh, networking event. And the first person who sat down in front of me said, oh, you're Kimber from Vertforce. What are you doing here? And I'm borderline face blind, so I have a really hard time recognizing anyone in general. But um, I recognized her as a Vertforce community member, and she became my first and closest friend here. Um, now four of our team members are here. So as soon as COVID is over, we're going to have a girls' night out. It's going to be great. <laughs> my wife but yes, is you're right. Night as well. Yes, you're right. It does energize you. It was not the initial goal, but it is now the reason for keeping on, keeping on. And you hit on something that is so powerful for everything about moving your life forward. And it, there's a quote that kind of like started my journey from Zig Ziglar that you can always have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. And that's what you're doing by helping them connect with them with the life changing type of work. And when you create that type of connection, empowerment and life changing event, you create a network that is always supporting each other. Like the amount of opportunity you probably witness daily is probably almost incredibly and awe inspiring, but it's all because you've helped enough people. And when you create that much goodwill in the universe, the energy and the synergies, it just helps everything. Like you just know so many more people like going to military hamster conference two times, connecting with that community, connecting with people that you maybe don't talk to for a year, but then you say hello again. And it's like, you've never said goodbye. Those mm -hmm. types of friendships mm -hmm. are so like for me, lifting myself up and getting connected with everything that I am, just having a conversation with someone, a dad, like sharing what our kids are doing, that gets me the most excited. And when you create the community that you've got, you create almost an insurance policy that your life keeps going in a positive way because there is so much goodwill surrounding you that can help but make your life go forward. I like your perspective on that. I really do. I, and I do believe in servant leadership. That's our core value at Vertforce, doing things for other people and, and making, making an impact in that respect, which is one of the things that I love about what you're doing at Military Veteran Dad because it really is servant leadership. It's saying, I can make money in any industry, in any job. I can do whatever I want for a living, but I choose to focus on this community because I love it. And I'm going to serve this community a lot of times, you know, with no financial um, revenue coming in. I'm going to do what I can to help this community. And eventually I'm just going to believe and have faith that things are going to fall into place. And my vision is going to eventually marry with um, a source of income, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you just pursue it because you love it and you love the people. And I think that falls back to that that age old saying, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Love that one. Yeah, it's it's important. So as we wrap up the interview, if there was one perfect piece of advice that you want a military dad to know that he either comes from your experience being married to a husband, what would that experience or what would that piece of advice look like for you? Well, I'm not a veteran. And I'm not yet a parent, although we're, we're hoping to get there very soon. So what I want to speak to you about is we see a lot of male military spouses who are also parents in our group. And we see a lot of uh, transitioning service members and veterans who are in the Vert Force community as well. And they're chasing remote work opportunities because they crave the opportunity to work from home with their family, to not be a slave to a brick and mortar and a nine to five. Uh, and I, I don't mean to say slave in a way that 
puts you down if you do want to work in an office or if you do want to work a nine to five. So forgive me if I've stepped on your toes there. But to me, that's just very far from what I want out of my career at this point. So what I want to tell you is being a work from home dad is possible. We help people get there. Uh, We've seen three dads hired in the last six months in virtual work from home positions. We would love to help you. If you would like to connect with Vertforce, you can join our private Facebook community. That's V-I-R-T-F-O-R-C-E. And just drop in, say hi, tell us who you are, and get connected on our job board, jobs.vertforce.us. All of our services are free. Uh, We're just here to help you get plugged in and help you find that work from home balance. We also have a great podcast. You can find it just by searching Vertforce, where we teach remote career strategies and remote career tips to help you find that perfect position that's going to let you be at home with your family and also provide income for your family. And it's not just limited to veterans, like because there's lots of uh, non-veterans that listen to this and non-military as well. So, But is it for all vet or everybody that's looking for a virtual idea? Oh, that's such a great question. We are growing kind of the civilian community and um, we have programs like Resume Bootcamp that's, that are open to everyone, but we really do specialize in building military hiring initiatives for our employers. So in that respect, when we're working on a military hiring initiative, we're specifically looking for transitioning service members and military yep. spouses who are looking for employment opportunities. But our resources are absolutely for everyone. You know, learning how to market yourself mm-hmm. in the remote workforce applies to everyone. Learning how to build a resume that is applicable to the virtual job market is applicable to everyone. So um, we, if you're interested, just join us and, and we'll figure out a space for you. And it's very similar to this podcast that just because you're a military dad or or a non-military dad, swap out a few words and the advice applies in the exact same way. It's just, mm-hmm. I use language that resonates at a frequency with military folks or, or you use military jargon, but the advice of how to be a great dad and step into your life is all still the same. So I absolutely love that advice because that you're, you're just opening up that door that we talked about earlier, that you, you don't know what you don't know. And so much about the transition, about stepping into your family, coming back home, is finding the right door that you fit into and stepping through it. And I spent 10 years stepping through the wrong doors, Mm -hmm. but I honestly would say I need to go through that because it created more pressure in my life to actually push me to create this podcast that if I didn't have that pressure of being miserable, I wouldn't have pushed myself to create a better life. But in this case, I probably would have wished I could have shortcutted it and had that door and walked through it and kind of discovered a little bit on my own. But at the same Mm -hmm. time, sometimes the world works in a way that that pressure is what you need to grow. And, even coronavirus, I take it that this is pressure and this is just an opportunity to grow through some to grow through something that we've never done and everything is an exercise for growth. Yeah, carbon and a little bit of pressure make diamonds, right? That's I spent eight years at my previous job before I lost it and I describe it a little bit on the weather side. Like I was under pressure for eight years and now I kind of I feel like a diamond on the other side and it's time to shine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's given me some really great visual images of you know, if I look back on the past five years of my life, even going back to all the way to 2014, 2013, and I think about all of the crazy things I have endured as uh, you know a partner, as an employee, as a woman, and I kind of see where I'm headed now and where I am today. I'm very appreciative of the pressure. Um, I love it when we're under pressure because it it's always me it always means a better product on the other side a and better our version American of culture you does not sell that piece of advice as the american dream because the american dream is about peace it's tranquility it's 1950s life is easy <laughs> you get to come home read the newspaper after work but honestly what you realize when you start chasing the american american dream is you just become slave to the credit card companies the car payments to a house payment that you maybe no longer want and you feel trapped. And on the other side of what we've been talking about is one where that pressure and that taking a road less traveled can really create a better life. And that's why I, my road was that one of chasing the American dream of debt and all the other nonsense that goes with it. But 
that pressure, even the idea that you can just, just uh, binge watching Netflix is something they're like, yeah, that's a happy life. I wish I could just do that all day. Like that's not mm. going to make you happy. That pressure is what you really need to push yourself forward. And that growth is really what you want to feel in your heart. And when you feel it in your heart, that's when you feel the most alive. I agree with that. And I, as a person and as an individual, I am always happier when I'm persevering. Mm-hmm. I'm always happier when there is something I am working towards or there is something that I am working through. As I was, I was just having a thought as I was going to wrap up that uh, if you have a daughter, I can already imagine you having the ambition that you've had, created what you've had, and stepped into being the awesome mom that I know you're going to be, like she's going to have an awesome role model to follow and one that just continues to make her step into her bigger life, into her real self. And like, that's a a really powerful feeling that you've got to create. And you're now, you're going to hopefully be able to start a family this year. And that bar that you've set as a woman in your household of what is accomplishable when you have the right man in your life, when you have the right person breathing life back into you, you, you starve your fear, you go towards your goals. Like she's going to be an amazing woman if you have a daughter because she's going to go out there and take big risks and do big things. That is so sweet. I am smiling. I'm so glad you <laughs> said that. I hope that we have a daughter. My husband hopes we have a son. So we'll see where that goes. <laughs> there's, there's always room for more kids. Yeah. Uh, and even right. the son, like he, he's going to look with some, he's going to look for a woman that strives to, to, to feed her heart every day because that's the example that you're going to represent that he's not going to settle for someone that's not living up to their purpose and passion. Oh, absolutely. I hope that we set that example for our children. Life always unfolds the way it's always meant to. I don't always understand why it's happening, but it's always happening for us, not to us. And I'm positive that your life is happening for you in a way that the world doesn't know yet. But when we do, it'd be like, man, (laughs) I agree with that. I think we're in alignment on a lot of our perspective of how the world works and what's going on in the universe and, and that things are unfolding for you and allow your heart to develop in that direction. It can be a very beautiful thing. Yeah. I want to thank you, Kimber, for coming on the podcast. It's been an amazing conversation. We dove into a door that I've walked by a hundred times but never really went all the way in. I'm glad we went all the way in in this conversation because this conversation is going to ignite, hopefully, that passion inside of you as a dad that, that you're waiting for that right opportunity, waiting for that right space. I know the space that I've created on the other side of losing my job has been the, one of the most amazing experiences. And hopefully, this podcast episode gives you the faith and the confidence to reach out to Kimber and her team to ignite those molecules of fatherhood inside your heart and just get it moving faster and faster and step into your best life. So Kimber, thank you for coming to the podcast. I absolutely loved it. And I'm positive this friendship is just getting started. Yes, I am too. It's great to see you at Military Creator Con and PodFest. And I'll see you again soon. Yes, hopefully. We, that I'm hoping MIC keeps going. So I'll yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we travel in the same circles. So I'll see you there. <laughs> All right. right. Thanks, Thanks, Ben. Bye-bye. That's a wrap for this week's episode. I really hope you enjoyed that one just as much as I am. Being a dad on the journey of fatherhood and trying to build a life with fatherhood in the center and everything orbiting, orbiting around it, this episode was close and dear to my heart. I really loved how we talked about those labels because as I transitioned out of the Marine Corps, as I transitioned out of my career and into this stay at home, as I transitioned through covid Labels was something that kind of kept coming back into me because I would use labels to help identify with things, but then those labels would also hold me back. So don't ever overestimate or underestimate how much those labels you put on different things in your life actually are things that actually prevent you from doing something because that label could be a wall. That was a really big one. I really like the advice you talked about focusing on the spouse because that spouse is someone that you're trying to be there, you're trying to be supportive, especially if you are active duty listening to this podcast because you're trying to empathize with what's going on in her world. You're really trying to be everything you need to be as a husband for her and getting it from the other side. Like I said in the very beginning, whenever you can get the advice right from the, the source, that is so much more powerful. And then starting a family while you're having a business, that's also something that's very taboo these days. And it's also, there's lots of people on different sides of the aisle. And there's a great story that she tells about how she's doing it in her life and how her husband is there supporting it. And I really love that story. 
And like I said in the beginning, finding that career as a dad on the other tra- side of transition, that was my major takeaway from Kimber Hill's episode today. And I really hope that you guys got out a lot of it. If you want to talk anything about being a stay-at-home dad or trying it, or if you want to figure out how it could work, reach out to Kimber Hill or reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation. All of Kimber's contact information is down in the show notes, the website, her LinkedIn profile. She is more than willing to reach out and help. And they have a great staff to help you guide through that journey. No matter where you are at in that transition process, they can help. So with that, I'm going to sign off and I will talk to you guys again on Friday.